What's happening people this is Rohit here and in this podcast episode I'm going to relate my life to the movie Inside Out and specifically to Riley and the different emotions in her head. I mean first of all there are a lot of differences here obviously because of Riley's generation itself is different and she was in middle school in the first movie and in the second movie trailer you can see that she is going to enter high school and for me I'm going to compare from my middle school sorry i'm going to compare from my high school till all the way to grad school so it's a different generation but a lot of changes a lot of things that i learned from the movie and it's a beautiful movie first of all when you think about the movie i remember having conversation uh, with my classmates and they were like the, the kind of thinking i'm like oh you know maybe in our head also we'll have all these emotions that's what i started thinking at least uh, the movie came on 2015 because i remember watching the movie for the first time there was there was floods in chennai the way are having floods and there was no power at our place and i was watching it in laptop with my father and I, it's a very good experience when i watched it for the first time but at the same time when i was 10th grade and that's like me being in high school 10th grade i had no intention of doing i didn't even think of doing something in psychology or anything related to social sciences itself but cutting i mean right now as a grad student after triple majoring and with one of the majors being in psychology and the kind of things that i've done in with my mental health being a psychology major being a student health advocate be, with a uh, health uh, health promotion division being a mental health advocate in itself and being a certified peer educator for a university level one as well as a naspa national certified one and the kind of journey that i had with mental health itself going to therapy ask you fighting with my therapist for like 3 to 4 3 to 4 sessions per week and i mean now that i think of it i'm like first time i i just watched it as itself i just thought i didn't think of psychology so much but i do think of people not so much about psychology and all that but later i feel after 12th grade after high school that's when i started thinking about psychology itself i'm like i do realize that i think about people in itself but definitely not about emotions but in the last one year in specific i'll say i have thought a lot about my emotions because of therapy so trying to relate i mean uh, three things three main things that i'm going to cover in this podcast that's what i'm trying to relate and this is just a brainstorming session even for me first thing is the black and white thinking for me it was the black and white thinking that i had till after till the time i completed my undergrad so that's like 21 years riley realized it a uh, while back she realized it in uh my middle school i realized it late but I, i did realize that i had a lot of black and white thinking and in my case it's actually the joy which is being dominant and sadness and i'm mean, here and there there's sadness but i did not give so much importance to sadness that's one thing i noticed but in the movie how they beautifully captured the fact that sadness is also important sadness the kind of role that sadness plays as an emotion in that movie and how she helps riley in so many different even the climax part when you realize that, that sadness is the one which brings her back to the family brings back so many different beautiful memories so in a way sadness and joy being connected and in the beginning you can see how joy was also like being super optimistic yes all that was fine i could see myself because when i rewatched the movie i was like you know what i can see myself in joy in a lot of ways but at the same time i can see why joy is also having the black and white thing it's uh, it's always joy who needs to be in the driver seat that's the part i am calling as black and white thinking that's something i am like eh, not a good thing that's first thing having the black and white thinking now i realize that yeah that's something which i was doing wrong and i realized it late riley realized it early and i feel a lot of people who are my age will also be going through something like this but i was not a huge person on empathy or anything i mean any any secondary emotions i was not so much into it but primary emotions joy was always in the driver seat even for me but the movie captured it beautifully ah it's a whole movie when you think about it i'm like wow what a beautiful movie second thing for me it's trying to accept different emotions as itself and i used to have a lot of emotion avoidance even now somewhere inside i have i am having a lot of emotion avoidance and this is something after 22 years in my life i am like why am i trying to avoid certain emotions what am i trying to neglect what am i not addressing you need to realize that each emotion has a specific function and that's what helps us prepare in itself in the second movie i mean i am shooting this in march of 2024 the second movie is going to come out this june and based on the trailer let's say you can realize how anxiety itself calls it up like we i'm helping really prepare for the future and that's actually important anxiety is a good thing anxiety lets people know and actually anxiety lets you know 
what's good for you what's happening what needs to change what needs what changes that you need to do to prepare and anxiety actually brings the best out of you even anxiety nervousness all of these things these are all the secondary emotions in the first movie it's the importance of primary emotions in the secondary emotions these are all secondary and then there's tertiary all of that when you look when you google emotional wheel you'll see so many different emotions i could not name more than five emotions till like three to four months before now i'm and now i'm getting better at it i'm not good at it but i do feel a lot of people naturally are good at it i was not but i did realize a lot of emotional avoidance is there and you can see in the second movie that they are bringing so many different emotions there's anxiety envy and then uh, embarrassment and then there are few other emotions which i'm not able to recollect but i do realize that all these are very important because as me as a person when you're trying to avoid something you're not addressing it so for example let's take a common example let's take loneliness what does loneliness what is loneliness actually conveying to you it is conveying to you that you need social company you need something you are missing something in your life again you can justify and say yes you need to be comfortable alone and all of that but again anger anger it actually means something is going wrong so but anger again becomes a primary emotion what are the secondary emotions can you think of uh jealousy okay jealousy is a very simple jealousy is again combination of anger and other aspects but you can realize that jealousy actually tells you what you are missing in life and what you need to be working towards I, that's again a secondary emotion so that kind of emotion avoidance for me was that that i was not addressing what the emotions are and again it can be you can be a better at it you can be better at avoiding it uh, i mean like getting better at addressing the emotions through therapy and there are so many other methods some people are naturally good at it i am not that's one the third thing is actually accepting anxiety as an emotion it's very interesting because i feel in this when i watched the second movie i feel anxiety is like the head of the secondary emotions and they are in the driver seat now and then in the private the fear is the one who shouts oh, we are all suppressed emotions i'm like wow that's a beautiful thing because anxiety is now in the driver seat for me i did not even accept anxiety as an emotion i'm like who oh, anxiety is for weak people how can i be anxious i'm not anxious at all I, I, i was having so much difficulty in accepting certain emotions emotion avoidance is different that's like you're saying no you're not lonely when you accept something as that emotion and you're at you have a term and you are addressing it you are accepting of that that's when you can work on it that's what emotional avoidance means but in my case i'm talking about not accepting certain emotions as itself for me anxiety i'm like hey yeah, i'm i'm not anxious anxious at all i'm i'm just no no i i was having a lot of nervous excitement but which was bordering on anxiety and this is general general anxiety i'm not talking about anxiety as a disorder but for me to even accept anxiety I, it took me a long time I'm like now i'm able to get better at it and say that okay this is what i'm feeling this is what i'm able to feel and actually talk it out but earlier i was not even accepting anxiety as emotion I, earlier i was not accepting so many emotions as an emotion i was like no that's what weak people feel that's what emotionally weak people that's what i used to say but now if i say it, it's become a huge controversy but at the same time i was not except when you accept when you acknowledge when you reflect when you recognize what all is happening with you when you talk about it when you talk about it with the right people when you have the right discussions when you have rather than saying right it's all about saying healthy emotions healthy conversations with people with the right set of people who are able to guide you in your growth in your self care routine in your self love era i think it will bring a huge change in itself but for me i'm like wow that movie actually now when i watched it recently i'm like I can I saw it from the lens of a psychology person and for me I'm like oh this is what I have been through this is what I can relate this is what I have uh, got better at and I'm actually in a way proud of it at the same time I feel there's a lot of other uh, things that I need to get better at but it's almost there I'm I'm definitely proud of the kind of journey that I had in mental health till now I'm pretty sure there'll be a second part to it after the movie releases <laughs> I guess I'll make a second movie Uh, over the second movie i'll make another mental health journey kind of thing of what i could relate again but based on all this i'm talking based on what i saw with the first movie and the kind of journey that i have had till now not being in psychology and now doing so much in psychology and mental health and it, in itself the kind of journey that i had i'm just grateful and yeah that's it for today thank you all for watching see you all in another one till then bye from me